Hi there, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to DCAC TV Kid Zone. I'm your host, Miss Hoy, and welcome back. We have a jam packed episode today, and I'm so excited for you to see it. Um, but as always, we're gonna start off with a song, and you might notice that today I don't have my ukulele, and that's because you don't always need an instrument to sing a song. Um, I'm gonna sing one of my favorite songs that I used to sing at camp when I was a kid. It's called Down by the Bay. Do you know that one? Yeah, I'm sure some of you do, and if you don't, hey, learn it today and sing along. So this is how it goes. Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go, for if I do, my mother would say, and this is the part where you have to pick someone or like an animal or something and then rhyme something that they're doing. So this is one of my favorite ones. Have you ever seen a llama wearing polka dot pajamas? Down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home. I dare not go, for if I do, my mother would say, have you ever seen a cat wearing a hat? Down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home. I dare not go, for if I do, my mother would say, your turn. Great job, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home. I dare not go, for if I do, my mother would say, one more, down by the bay, great job everybody, great job, that one is so much fun, and brings back so many happy memories for me, um, alright, Let's get on with our episode. So first up on the show, we have Nick's Book Nook. Nick is back with another book today, so cuddle in, and let's see what he brought to read. Oh, oh, oh. Hey everyone, I just had a huge breakfast. It's really making my tummy hurt because I ate so much. Oh, but then just as I finished, the mailman came and gave me some mail from my friend, the caterpillar. He said he was having a little problem with his stomach too, but he said he had some big news. So let's see what that was all about. The very hungry caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food because he was very, very hungry. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. I'd probably still be hungry too. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. I'd probably start getting a little full at this point. On Friday, he ate through five whole oranges, but he was still hungry. And on Saturday, uh-oh, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake. He ate through one ice cream cone. He ate through one pickle. He ate through one slice of Swiss cheese he ate through one slice of salami. He ate through one lollipop. He ate through one piece of cherry pie. He ate through one sausage. He ate through one cupcake. And he ate through one slice of watermelon? That night he had a stomach ache. Yeah, I think I would too. The very hungry caterpillar then ate through one green leaf and started to feel a little better. 
probably because he was eating good food instead of junk food. Now the caterpillar was no longer small. He was a big, fat caterpillar. So what he did is he built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks, which is nothing compared to what we've been doing for the last few months. Then he nibbled a small hole in the cocoon. He pushed his way out and he was a beautiful butterfly. That's what my friend had to tell me. His stomach hurt too, but now he turned into a beautiful butterfly. Oh, that makes me feel really nice. And I think my stomach aches going away a little bit. Hi! Here's Presley. Doc, doc. Who's there? Doris. Doris who? Doris is locked. That's why I'm knocking. <laughs> All right, everybody, my friend Garrett is back from Western Engineering this week. I'm sure with another craft that's fun, but also makes us use our noggins. Let's see what he has in store. Hello again, everyone. This time I've got a really cool activity that has to do with biomedical engineering. This device has actually been used to help save people's lives. So biomedical engineers are a fairly new branch of engineering that focuses on engineering the human body and for healthcare. So for healthcare, a biomedical engineer might design an x-ray machine or a robot for surgery, or they might even design all of the cool complex gadgets that go into a hospital bed. For problems that modern medicine can't quite fix yet with the human body, a biomedical engineer might design a prosthetic limb or arm or leg, or if a person can't hear and they're deaf, then a biomedical engineer might design an a device that'll be able to help them hear again and for a person who is blind then they are just starting to design devices that can help people see again. Now that we've learned a little bit about biomedical engineers we're ready to make our device. So all you need for this device to make it is a sheet of paper, a pencil or pen, and a ruler and a pair of scissors. Now let's get to building. Start by taking your paper, folding it in half vertically twice, then folding it in half horizontally once. Unfold it and cut out one of these rectangles. Now we need to start using our ruler to measure two centimeters in from both edges on the short sides and drawing two parallel lines to connect them. Use your ruler to measure one centimeter to the left and to the right of the middle and then make a mark on both of the parallel lines. After we do that, we need to draw two triangles and then a rectangle connecting the two triangles. Now draw a straight line from the point of these triangles to either side and use your scissors to cut the four edges off. We're already almost done. Now all we need to do left is to crease every line and then fold all of them away from you, just like so. After you've creased every line, including the parts of the triangle, we can when we squeeze it, It'll open and close, and we've got a gripper. Grippers like these are starting to be used on surgery robots because they can be a lot smaller than the other options that are available. So if it's smaller and the tools are smaller, that gives the doctors a lot more wiggle room so that it's easier to do the surgery and they don't have to worry too much about damaging things that they don't want to touch. After I got mine to work, I put an arm on it to show what it would look like if it was on the end of a surgery robot. So now I can just pull my string and it'll close the gripper. If you can figure out how I did this, then go right ahead and try and do it yourself. But this isn't needed. You can always just leave it as it is and hold it like this and you've got your own gripper. I hope you learned something and you enjoyed yourself today. Happy engineering, and I'll see you again next time. Happy engineering, Garrett. Thanks so much for being on the show today. I sure have learned a lot since you've come around. All right, and someone to teach us even more. My friend Abby is back, and she's here with a French lesson for us. Let's see. Hello everyone, I'm Abby, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to say a couple words in French. So by the end of the segment, you're going to know how to introduce yourself. You're going to be able to say, hello, my name is, nice to meet you, in French. 
So let's take that first sentence, which is, hello, my name is. Now, hello is just bonjour. So anytime you hear someone saying bonjour, they're saying hi or hello. Now, je m'appelle means my name is. So again, je m'appelle, my name is. So if we're to put bonjour and je m'appelle together, we're saying hello, my name is. But if you want to introduce yourself, you need to add your name right at the end of that sentence. So you would need to say, bonjour, je m'appelle, and then you put your name in right at the end. So if we were to take me, for example, I would say, hello, my name's Abby, which would translate over to, bonjour, je m'appelle Abby. Now for that second part of the sentence, we're going to be teaching you guys how to say, nice to meet you. Now, nice to meet you translates over to, enchanté à te rencontrer. So, enchanté just means nice. So, anytime you hear someone saying enchanté, they're simply saying nice. Now, à te rencontrer means to meet you. À te, to meet you. À te rencontrer. So, again, we'll go over that. Enchanté means nice. And then, à te rencontrer means to meet you. À te rencontrer. So, enchanté, à te rencontrer. Nice to meet you. Now, we're going to take that sentence we learned at the beginning of the segment, which was bonjour, je m'appelle, and then you put your name at the end. So, bonjour, je m'appelle Abby, nice to meet you, which is enchanté, à te rencontrer. So, let's put that together one more time. Bonjour, je m'appelle Abby, enchanté, à te rencontrer, which translates back to, hello, my name is Abby, nice to meet you. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to introduce yourself in French. Thanks for joining me on my segment and on to the next. Au revoir, Abby. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on the show today. Guys, we are at the end of episode 11. How did that happen? Oh my goodness, I've had so much fun in our jam-packed episode today. I hope you did too. And of course, we are finishing off the show with our musical feature. We have the Rizdales here today singing us a song. See you next week. <laughs> So clean, so clean I'm begging only please just wash your hands So clean, so clean, so clean, so clean Don't touch your face and cancel all your plans This virus is beyond compare It seems as though it's everywhere And the safest place to be is quarantine Netflix or just read a book, revisit your old crochet hook and check in on the folks that go unseen. So clean, so clean, so clean, so clean. I'm begging out of you, please just wash your hands. So clean, so clean, so clean, so clean. Don't touch your face, cancel all your plans. Bad news, obviously, everything's closing, and that means that the Rizdales will not be uh, playing our show at the Richmond Tavern in London, Ontario on Saturday. But we will see you on the flip side of this nightmare, and uh, stay tuned. Maybe we'll even have a little concert window or something that we can do for you while we're all cooped up here. So, love to everybody. Take care and stay healthy. We'll see you soon. <laughs>